أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أما بعد We start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by sending our peace and blessings to our noble and beloved Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam and I remind myself and yourselves on this blessed and joyous day of Yom al-Jum'ah to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To fear Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us to fear Him in the Qur'an when He says, 
يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون او يو بيليف fear Allah the way he should be feared and do not die except in the state of Islam in the state of submission to him we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to die in the state of Islam and to resurrect us in the state of Islam and to unite us in Jannah al-Firdaus with Ummah al-Islam Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Brothers and sisters in Islam as we approach the holy and blessed month of Ramadan it is customary and it is essential and it is min al darurati fi al makan it's something that is needed in its place to speak about the month of Ramadan the month of fasting the month of Quran the month of the masajid and reconnecting to the masajid and the month of personal reform but this won't be the normal khutbah unfortunately because what the ummah is going through and undergoing in our times and our days is much more severe as we stand here and may be talking about fasting we may be talking about the hunger and the thirst and the suppression of desires in the month of Ramadan but there are people that have been hungry and thirsty and suppressing their desires for the past 4 months How can we speak about fasting when we see them dying from hunger? How can we speak about feeling with hunger when we see hunger killing our brothers and sisters around the world? And specifically in Gaza. When we speak about the Quran, we speak about its recitation, we speak we speak about the connectivity we have to Allah with the Quran and through the Quran how can we not speak about the brothers and sisters who are right now living the Quran who are right now using the Quran as their only means of anesthesia they numb their pains with the Quran how can we speak about the masajid and reconnecting with the masajid when there are brothers and sisters who have no masajid to go to in Ramadan this Ramadan as most of the masajid have been destroyed for our brothers and sisters there in Gaza how can we speak about reforming our lives and changing our lives when brothers and sisters are losing their lives losing their families this Ramadan we might be thinking of how to leave a sin or how to change an addiction or how to go back to Allah or fix our relationship with our kinship when brothers and sisters don't have a kinship to rekindle a relationship with they don't have a life to reform let alone get better in how can we stand here and act oblivious to the harsh realities that the ummah is undergoing today brothers and sisters one of the worst thing that allah can bestow upon a people is his la'na allah's curse the curse of allah when it befalls a people لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً Nothing can uncover this curse except for one, except for Allah. But when it comes down, إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ Allah's punishment and Allah's curse is really severe. Really severe. 
may Allah protect us. We say Ameen. We want Allah to protect us. But what are we doing for the curse not to come down on us today? Brothers and sisters, it was narrated in a hadith that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a woman entered the hellfire because she trapped a cat inside a room without feeding it or giving it anything to drink. A cat. This woman did not feed the cat or give it anything to drink. And the Prophet ﷺ said, because of this, her worship meant nothing. Her prayers meant nothing. She went to the hellfire for that. Imagine the one who traps millions of people and prevents them from food and from drink and from safety and security when they're able to. Imagine the punishment and Allah. Imagine, and this is not only the punishment that the decision makers do, but also the people who agree with, the people who support, the people who do not mind, or even maybe the people, and we seek Allah's refuge from this, the people who stay silent and their heart doesn't even move when they see people being starved to death and dying from thirst. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in another hadith, as a, one of the companions came and asked him, told him there's a woman who curses at us. She's our neighbor. She always uses bad language. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا خير فيها هي في النار. He said, there's no good in that woman. She's going to the hellfire. Tell us, just leave her alone. Because of what? Because of her foul language. But imagine the one who uses bad language towards their brothers and sisters. Unsupportive, khudlan, hypocritical language towards their brothers and sisters. Non-empathetic language. No compassion, no mercy. Nas'alallah al afiyah Or the person that hears ayat Allah yukfaru biha wa yustahza'u biha. The one who hears Allah's words, who hears Islam, who hears even the believers being let down and stay silent like a silent shaitan. They hear it. And they're able to say, but they don't. In a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a man came to him and complained about a neighbor that kept harming him. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa didn't hesitate, but gave him something that would be a cure for that neighbor. He told him, pack up your stuff and go and live on the street. Leave that house with a bad neighbor and live on the road. He said, Ya Rasulullah, but it's my house. He said, take your luggage, take your items, take everything and go take it to the side of the road. Live there. And whenever someone passes, you tell them why you're living on the road. And that's exactly what this man did. He lived right there on the road. And when everyone asked him, why are you sitting here? Don't you have a house? He said, I have a bad neighbor. I cannot bear to live next to him. And the people would say, may the curse of Allah be on that person. What a bad neighbor he is. But the curse of Allah affected this person. He was a bad neighbor. But the curse of Allah impacted him. When he heard everyone's curse, Coming, he obviously felt it in his life. He felt it in his wife. He felt it in his kids. He felt it in his wealth. He felt it in his health. He felt it in everything around him. It was only a matter of time before he told this man, come, please, come back. Wallahi, I'll never do anything bad to you. Just come live in your house. Subhanallah. When the curse of Allah comes, oh, trust me. It's, be, it's, it's, it's felt. The Prophet ﷺ said, you want to fear something? 
Do you want something to be afraid of? There's a thing the Prophet ﷺ told us to be afraid of. And there's a thing that Rasul ﷺ, every time he traveled, he would seek refuge in Allah from. It's not a boogie monster. It's not the plots of an enemy. It's not, it's not sudden death. It's not disease. None of that. The Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge from the dua of a mazloom against him. He would seek refuge from the dua of an oppressed person against him. This is who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he said in another hadith, اتقي دعوة المظلوم فإنه ليس بينها وبين الله حجاب. Fear the dua of the oppressed because there's nothing between it and between Allah. There's nothing. I could only imagine what type of dua our brothers and sisters are making in Gaza or in Sudan or in Yemen or anywhere where our brothers and sisters are starving around the world. I can only imagine the dua. Wallahi. This is something we should fear. Not because we should, because Rasulullah told us to fear it. When we go to a restaurant and the order doesn't have enough salt, when they don't put enough cheese on the pizza, when the burger doesn't have enough meat, and we're complaining, and our face changes, and our heart gets tight, and our chest gets confined, and our manners become rude, and you can see the difference in the person over a plate of food. Imagine the person who is going to look for a piece of bread for his son or for his daughter and then gets killed before he can bring it back to them. Imagine. Imagine the one who's staring at his infant boy or girl dying because they couldn't do their part and bring them anything to eat. This is happening now. They don't need Ramadan to fast. They're feeling it. But they're not making dua against us, thankfully. And if they did, wallahi, the curse would be upon us. Wallahi, we wouldn't feel pleasure in our lives. But let us fear that time. What if they do get to that point? And they do see us indulging in our lives, and they do see us forgetting them, and they do see us skipping their images on our feed because we can't bother to look at them even. We can't bother to read the news anymore because you know what? It's making my pleasure less. It's making my life more constrained. I can't be happy living. Of course you can't be happy. How can we be pushed to make dua or to make a difference? Subhanallah. So brothers and sisters, let this Ramadan be a Ramadan where we really feel it and we see those who are feeling it. Let it be a Ramadan where we pray to Allah that His curse does not befall upon us because of what we're doing or what we're saying or what we're not doing. May Allah forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise our ranks and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are always in help and in assistance of their brothers and sisters who are in need of their help around the world. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu ma samatum wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى أهله وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وبعد 
عباد الله اتقوا الله Brothers and sisters, let's fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let's fear what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to fear. The day before yesterday, we looked or we saw for those who were following the news one of the most gruesome Massacres yet in this war not against the people of Gaza. This is a war against humanity. This is a war against humanity. Because this accepting this is only a green light for more of this to happen. For years, we thought that the modern civilized world moved beyond these types of images that we read about in history books. We thought that there's a collective consciousness that exists in the world today that prevents these types of massacres from happening. But what we are seeing is that this humanity and the hours and the billions of dollars spent to bring these nations together to come up with a civilized way of dealing with things is disappearing before our eyes as the world is accepting things like this. They're accepting things like this to happen in their time and on their record. Brothers and sisters, as the land passages and the air and everything is blocked from these two million Muslims who are living in the biggest open air prison in the world, being killed from all over, from above them, below them, to the sides, from sea and from land. They're starving to death. And then when the food comes down, it comes down on the shore. And some of it even lands in the water. As if it was pre-planned. So that the people can rush to the seashore and they can get their food. And when thousands are flocking to feed their kids who they see dying in front of them, because there's no other place to get food, they get attacked there. And more than 150 die. Men and women rushing to get bread, to get food. And this is happening before our eyes. And even the lies that are portrayed in the media and the lies that are portrayed by officials and the lies that are upon lies upon lies, they're starting to lose their credit. Even the liars stop knowing how to lie. Even the liars started to say, hey, I sound like a liar right now. And they do. But للأسف, where is the truth in the midst of all this? I'm a khatib. The word is my booth. We can speak the truth from what we see. But how many of us are just sitting there waiting for this scholar or a khatib or a student of knowledge, or an influencer, to speak. And then guess what? This person gets stopped. This person's uninvited. This scholar is this. This social media account is closed. Okay, what are the people doing? What are the people doing? Are we just watching? Is this a movie? Is this Netflix? We're going through, oh wow, cool, he said it. Oh man, poor guy, he's... Blocked. This account is closed. That tweet, that this, 
But what about the people? Brothers and sisters, this is the time to think to ourselves and think honestly so that the curse of Allah does not befall us all. So that Allah's la'na is not bestowed upon us. Not only the la'na of Allah, but the la'na of every generation that will come after us, that will say, woe to a generation that allowed this to happen. Woe to a generation that saw this and didn't do anything about it. Woe to a generation that had any capability to their capacity, and Allah knows everyone's capacity of stopping this or doing anything about it, but they can't. Woe to them. Generations upon generations may read and curse us if we don't move. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, this past week, a few days ago, we all watched the news and we saw a soldier from the U.S. who stood in front of an embassy and burned himself. And as Muslimin, we don't support suicide. And it's against our religion. And Allah forbade us from it. And he's not Muslim. He never heard a khutbah in his life. He never read the Qur'an. He never, he's, he never read, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Indeed, the believers are brothers. He never read that. He never read about Jannah or Nar. He never read about the rights of a believer on a believer. But his own humanity made him stand in protest, say, I can't take this anymore. If his humanity made him do that, subhanAllah, then where's our humanity? If it's not Islam that's bringing us, then where's the humanity? And ya ikhwan, Although the act is wrong, but the idea is what we need to think of. Where is our support? This Ramadan should be a Ramadan of change of our mindset. Our paradigm needs to shift. We cannot be closed in our little bubbles. We need to be part of one ummah. We can't just be watching behind the screen anymore. If we're not making dua, then Ya Allah, where are you're way behind, Ya Akhi, Ya Ukhti. This thing we're done, we should have been doing for a long time already. Now it's time to change. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us, to make us agents of change in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be the conscious mind of this world. Ya Allah, if society lost its humanity, allow us to be those who revive it in them. Ya Allah, if the people and society lost consciousness and lost empathy, then make us from those who revive it in them. Ya Allah, allow us to feel with our brothers and sisters and act upon the truth and do whatever is in our capacity to help those who are in distress and need our help. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not make us mute shayateen who watch and hear evil and falsehood and do not speak about it or do anything about it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to stand for the truth wherever and whenever we are. We ask Allah to guide us to the straight path. We ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us beakers of light in this land. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to stand for justice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to stand for humanity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from those who change themselves to the better and then change those around them to the better as well. We ask Allah to be with our brothers and sisters in Gaza. We ask Allah to be with our brothers and sisters in Sudan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with our brothers and sisters in China and in Burma and in Afghanistan and in Yemen and all over the world. We ask Allah to be with our brothers and sisters in Syria and all over the world, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see an end to this, to this genocide that is taking place in Gaza and in Sudan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to cool our eyes with peace 
that prevails humanity, and justice that prevails humanity, and a, a consciousness that enters the heart of mankind, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ask Allah to forgive us. Ask Allah to have mercy on us and to enter us into Jannah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa ita idhi al-qurba wa inha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tathakkaroon. Udhkuru Allah al-azim yadhkurkum wa shkuruhu ala ni'amihi yazidkum wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon wa akun as-salah.